the Schneidegger family haunting. Truth or fabrication? Biddles, weirdos, balls of ghouls, today we're going to delve into one of the most controversial and debated hauntings in modern history. The Schneidegger family haunting, or as you may know it, the haunting in Connecticut. So what really happened in that house in Southern Connecticut? So let's uncover the truth behind the myths, the media, and the motives. In 1986, the Snedeker family moved into a rental home in Southern Connecticut. The family consisted of Carmen and Al Snedeker, their daughter and their three sons, and there was a, a niece involved at some point as well. And of the three sons, the eldest was undergoing cancer treatment. Unbeknownst to the family, the home had a dark past. It was a former funeral parlour. So according to the Snedegers, the shortly after moving in, they began experiencing disturbing paranormal activity. The elder son, Philip, who was undergoing treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma, was reportedly the first to encounter the spirits. Philip claimed to see terrifying entities and he described encounters with these malevolent spirits. His behaviour grew increasingly erratic, leading to concerns that his experiences were linked to his illness and the medication that he was taking. The rest of the family also reported other bizarre occurrences, disembodied voices, strange odours and even physical attacks. Carmen even going as far to have claimed that she was sexually assaulted by an unseen force that started in the kitchen while she was washing dishes and didn't end until she was at the bottom of her driveway. Both Carmen and Anise reporting being apparitions at the home. Enter Ed and Lorraine Warren. It's invisible, it's intangible, and it's very dangerous. I totally agree. And so desperate for the help, Snedekers reach out to renowned paranormal investigators, Ed and Lorraine Warren. My thoughts on Ed and Lorraine Warren are very clear. There is a video on the channel about them. But the Warrens were brought in because of them being famous famous from other cases, including the Amateurville horror, which turned out to be a load of lies. The Warrens were quick to label the house as a hotspot for demonic activity. Fair play to the Warrens, they are far more likely to shout demon than those bigger YouTube channels that just stare at their phone and shout, it said demon, dude bro, dude bro, bro dude, dude bro, bro dude, did you see that? Then the Warrens bring in a team of investigators and a priest to perform an exorcism on the house. There is something in this house. And the Warrens then claimed that necromancy and necrophilia had been practiced at the funeral home, and that's what had left such a dark imprint on the house. Only the neighbours didn't agree. The previous family that owned it as a funeral parlour were well loved in the town. People thought highly of them. So the next step, of course, with it being Ed and Lorraine Warren, was a book, and then a movie. And in 1992, Author Ray Garten wrote a book entitled In a Dark Place, The Story of a True Haunting, and he detailed the Snedeker family experiences. However, Garten later revealed that the book was largely fictionalised, and he claimed that Ed Warren told him to use what he could and create a scary story. He said, make the he, I'm not kidding. He said, make the rest up. He said, you use what you can, make the rest up. He said, you write scary books. That's why we hired you, you know, make it up and make it scary. Oh my God. He said, make the rest up. He said, you use what you can, make the rest up. He said, you write scary books. And then in 2009, the story was adapted into a film, The Haunting in Connecticut. The movie took significant creative liberties, portraying The Haunting in a far more sensationalized manner than the already exaggerated book. But thankfully, they left Ed and Lorraine Warren out of it. Lorraine hadn't developed superpowers by then. I see you, The Conjuring 3. What the hell? So skeptics and investigators then started to scrutinise the Snedeker family's claims. Neighbours and previous tenants were reporting no paranormal activity. The family's accounts were inconsistent. And the stories kept changing over time. Joe Nickel, a paranormal investigator, Noted as saying the story lacks credibility, there are numerous inconsistencies 
and many elements can be attributed to the psychological effects of stress, illness and medication. And that is the biggest thing for this. The son not only was going through cancer treatment and the stress associated with that, but he had mental health issues as well. As well as the stress of cancer, the stress of having to move to this house to be closer to the hospital, there's the actual treatment. And the treatment could have induced hallucinations. Philip's behaviour and experiences could be explained by side effects of his cancer treatment. And additionally, Carmen and Al Snedeker's credibility was questioned. There were rumours of financial struggles and possible substance and alcohol abuse. And let's not forget the Warrens' credibility. Anything, the Warrens' involvement in this case further muddies the waters. Critics have long accused them of fabricating or exaggerating stories for profit. I'm one of them. Many of the famous cases, like the Amateurville horror, have been thoroughly and utterly debunked, or at the very least, heavily, heavily disputed. And let's not forget the Warrens were known for the dramatic flair and the willingness to bend the truth. And it seems to me and a lot of other people out there that the Warrens' primary goal was never to help people. It was to sell books and to secure the rights to movie deals. It was about money. And then there's this alleged haunting. It had a significant impact on the local community. For a time, the community didn't celebrate Halloween because they didn't want just they didn't want just anyone rolling into town and parking up outside this house. Neighbours were very sceptical and even annoyed by media attention and the portrayal of the town as being haunted. The sensationalism that was brought to the town by the Warrens and the subsequent media frenzy led to outrage and frustration among residents. The Snedeker family haunting remains a contentious and polarising topic. While some believe in the paranormal, normal activity that was reported. Others like myself see it as a case of exploitation of a young man going through absolute hell and then the fabrications. The involvement of the more than questionable Warrens, the inconsistencies of the family stories that you can read and find interviews online. YouTube has plenty of interviews and the lack of corroborating evidence all cast doubt on the veracity of these claims. Now for me, in the end, the Snedeker haunting serves as a cautionary tale about the power of suggestion, the influence of the media, and the lengths at which self-proclaimed psychic mediums and self-proclaimed demonologists will go to for fame and fortune. It's no different to seeing that priest turn up on Zach Baggins show and then him charge people to do demonology courses online that I was banned from. Thank you for watching this video. It's a case that interested me as a kid. I read the book very, very young, and then I loved the movie. Why were the not Warrens not in the movie? Maybe it's because of the interviews. Maybe it was because of the Conjuring universe rolling around the corner. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified of any further updates. And I'll be diving further into more sort of reported haunted case cases and why, how they could be real, why they're probably fake, things like that. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And until next time, stay curious, stay sceptical, question everything. Much love, Hero out.